Dividend ETFs are one of the most loved types of ETFs because by paying out a regular dividend, they actually make you feel a shareholder of the companies and not just a stock market investor. So today I decided to compare the 10 most important dividend ETFs and just like I did a couple of weeks ago with my growth ETF comparison, I created a file that automatically grades these ETFs and I'm gonna make it available to you as always for free through the link in the description below. My name is Rick, your trusted investor and twin of Manu Ginobili, and this is the ultimate dividend ETF comparison. For every ETF, we're going to compare dividend yield, diversification, and performance. In particular, for diversification, we're gonna see the number of holdings and the top 10 holdings. While for performance, we're gonna see the performance of the last 10 and five years. In the end, we're gonna weight these factors and the table will give us a grade for each ETF. Up here, you can define the weight or importance that you wanna to give to the three criteria, dividend yield, diversification, and performance. Obviously, a simplified table like this can't replace a careful analysis of the ETFs. So, if you download this file, just use it with caution or feel free to add other factors that you want to consider for your choice. So, grab your free file from the description below, drop a beautiful like, subscribe to the channel, and now let's dive right into the ETF comparison. Let's start with SCHD, the Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF. SCHD has a dividend yield of 3.43%, a cheap expense ratio of 0.06%, and a portfolio made out of 103 holdings. The top 10 holdings weighed 40.28% of the total portfolio, and the ETF delivered an average annual return of 10.84% in the last 10 years, and 11.79% in the last five. SHD is one of the most sophisticated dividend ETFs when it comes to selecting criteria of the holdings, and is based on the Dow Jones US Dividend 100 Index, selecting 100 US securities with at least 10 consecutive years of dividend payments. The index excludes REITs and the screens are free cash flow to total debt, return on equity, expected dividend yield, and five years dividend growth. The second ETF is VYM, the Vanguard High Dividend Yield ETF. VYM has a dividend yield of 2.89%, an expense ratio of 0.06% like SHD, but a quite diversified portfolio of 553 holdings. The top 10 weigh 24.79% of the portfolio, and the average annual return has been 9.73% in the last 10 years and 9.75% in the last five. This fund tracks the performance of the FTSC High Dividend Yield Index, an index that selects high yield dividend paying companies based in the US excluding REITs. Being VYM a broad-based ETF with many holdings, obviously it overlaps a lot with most of the dividend ETFs. So take this into account when you invest in it. The larger sectors are financials, industrials, and healthcare, which are typically stable sectors, and the top companies are Broadcom, JP Morgan, ExxonMobil, Johnson & Johnson, and so on. Next ETF is the Vanguard International High Dividend Yield ETF, ticker VYMI. VYMI has a really high dividend yield of 4.52%, an expense ratio of 0.22%, and a total number of holdings of 1,530, making this ETF the most diversified of the list. The top 10 holdings, in fact, weighed only 14.42%. As of performance, VYMI delivered one of the lowest returns on its list, being international, with 8.18% in the last 10 years and 6.83% in the last five. By the way, the ETF is eight years old, so for the 10 years, I actually took the average of the last eight. VYMI is an international ETF, including developed and emerging markets. And this brought the ETF to have a lower return in the last 10 years. But I want to remind everyone that the US didn't always outperform international stocks. Since 1975, US and international have tended to outperform each other in cycles of around eight years. And we're currently at 13 long years into the current cycle of US outperforming international. And this based on the five-year monthly rolling returns. So maybe it will go on like this, but international might even outperform again in the future. Next up, we have VIG, the Vanguard Dividend Appreciation ETF. VIG has a dividend yield of 1.78%, which is going to be one of the lowest on the list, an expense ratio of 0.06% and a total number of holdings of 339, with the first 10 weighting 30.57% of the total portfolio. As for performance, VIG delivered an average annual return of 11.07% in the last 10 years and 11.73% in the last five. VIG tracks the performance of the S&P US Dividend Growers Index and targets mostly large cap stocks with a minimum of 10 years consecutive dividend growth. There is another really good ETF that also uses a similar methodology and that is NOBL, the Dividend Aristocrats ETF, 
that requires 25 straight years of growth. I actually prefer VIG's methodology because it includes some of the emerging dividend growth companies, particularly those from the tech sector. Next up is SPYD, the Spider Portfolio S&P 500 High Dividend ETF. SPYD has a dividend yield of 4.27%, an expense ratio of 0.07%, and the lowest number of holdings in this list, with 75 positions. The top 10 holdings weight 15.34% of the portfolio, which is quite interesting considering that the ETF doesn't have so many holdings. When it comes to performance, SPYD delivered an average and a return of 8.44% in the last nine years, not 10 because the inception was nine years ago, and 6.14% in the last five. SPYD tracks the S&P 500 High Dividend Index that picks the 80 companies with the highest dividend yield in the S&P 500. This is a limitation, of course, because there are better companies that maybe give a little less dividend yield, but at the same time, this has allowed SPYD to pay high dividends for a very long time. Next one is HDV, the iShares Core High Dividend ETF. HDV has a dividend yield of 3.35%, an expense ratio of 0.08%, and again, like SPYD, only 75 holdings. But don't worry, if you own both, 75 is just a coincidence. In fact, they have a total overlap of just 20%. The top 10 holdings weighed 57.89% of the total portfolio, and the ETF delivered an average annual return of 7.6% in the last 10 years, and 6.83% in the last five. By the way, the name of HDV, which is Core High Dividend, might imply that it has purely a dividend yield focus. But that's actually not the case. It also considers a pair of Morningstar measures to ensure the quality of those dividends. And these are the so-called economic modes and distance to the fold. Both these rates indicate that a company is not in financial distress and maintains some sort of competitive advantage. ETF number seven is FDVV, the Fidelity High Dividend ETF. FDVV has a dividend yield of 2.94%, an expense ratio of 0.15%, and 108 holdings. The top 10 weight 30.7% of the total portfolio, and the average annual return has been 12.23% in the last eight years, because the ETF is only eight years old, and 13.45% in the last five. This fund tracks the performance of the Fidelity High Dividend Index, which selects companies based on dividend yield, payout ratio, and dividend growth. The reason why the performance has been so high is not to be found in the dividend yield, but instead in the fact that it includes companies like Nvidia, Microsoft, and Apple. Next up, we have DIVI, the Franklin International Core Dividend Yield ETF. The IVI has a dividend yield of 2.27%, an expense ratio of 0.08%, and a total number of holdings of 412 with the first 10 weighting 15.34% of the total portfolio. As for performance, the IVI delivered an average annual return of 8.68% in the last eight years, namely since inception, and 9.5% in the last five years. The underlying index is called, wait for it, Morningstar Developed Market X North America Dividend Enhanced Select Index SM, which targets large and mid-cap stocks outside North America and delivers a high dividend yield. Next up is DGRO, the Asher's Core Dividend Growth ETF. DGRO has a dividend yield of 2.27%, an expense ratio of 0.08%, and 412 holdings. The top 10 weighed 26.77% of the portfolio, and the average annual return was 11.29% percent in the last 10 years and 11.22% in the last five. DGRO tracks the Morningstar US Dividend Growth Index, which gives access to US companies that have a history of consistently growing dividends. Last ETF is DGRW, the Wisdom Tree US Quality Dividend Growth Fund. DGRW has a dividend yield of 1.6%, an expense ratio of 0.28%, and 301 holdings, with the top 10 weighting 36.6% of the total portfolio. The average annual return of this ETF has been 12.74% in the last 10 years and 14.63% in the last five, which is the highest return on this list. The ETF tracks a Wisdom Tree US Quality Dividend Growth Index that consists of dividend paying large cap companies with growth characteristics in the US equity market. All right, now that we have all the information about all ETFs, let's take a look at the table together. Looking at the dividend yield, the highest is given by international ETFs like VYMI and DIVI. The lowest belongs instead to DGRW. Usually, the higher the dividend yield, the lower the performance. In fact, DGRW has the lowest dividend yield, but also the highest performance, while VYMI, SPYD, and HDV 
have high dividend yield but the lowest long-term performance. A good compromise with this is given by FDVV, which has a nice 2.94% dividend yield but also high performance, as well as SACHD with 3.43% dividend yield and 11-12% long-term performance. Diving into the holdings, the less diversified are SHD, SPYD and HDV, while the higher number of holdings belongs to international ETFs like VYMI, DIVI, plus to VYM, which is a great compromise between good long-term returns dividend yield and diversification. Now with the three cells you see here for dividend yield, diversification and performance, you can decide how important these three factors are for you and this is going to influence the grading of the ETFs right here. And it's going to automatically weigh the parameters of the table. Right now I've put 30% on dividend yield, 20% on diversification and 50% on performance because I still believe that the total return is more important than the dividend yield. But for all the dividend investors out there, you can just change it as you please. With this configuration, the winner is FDVV, followed by a close DGRW. It doesn't come as a surprise because FDVV has a good dividend yield, but above all, an extremely good long-term performance that in our current configuration weights 50% of the total points. The lowest ETF on the list instead is HDV. Some of you might be surprised to see that SHD is not the best or that VYM or VHR are not the best. But as I said, to make a good decision, one should not only consider a simplified table like this, but many other factors like index criteria, or for example, how long the ETF has been paying dividends. Nevertheless, as I said, this table is a good starting point, and you can also add other ETFs if you download it from the link in the description below, or also change the criteria. By the way, a nice like to this video and a subscription are a perfect way to support me, so this would be the perfect moment to do it. So let's try now to change the input parameter. Let's say that dividend yield is more important for you with 50% and diversification stays at 20. In this case, the two international ETFs, VYMI and DIVI, become the best because they have higher dividend yield, followed by FDVV again and SHD. I want to remark that FDVV has a strong overweight in information technology with almost 27% of the ETF in it. So if we have to be honest, it's kind of an outsider in this list. If you consider the list without this ETF, right after the two international ETFs, you'd actually have SHD. There are many ways you can tweak this table depending on your needs, and you can also add some ETFs or some parameters to consider. Just download it from the link down below and be nice and drop a like to this video as a thank you if I could give you any value with it. Let us know which dividend ETF you own and which ones you are thinking about buying, because we are interested to know about you. Apart from this, thank you for watching until the end. I wish you a great day or evening, and as always, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao!